Hello everyone. Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I believe you're doing good. Welcome to another episode of Prophetic Time. I believe these videos are blessing you and helping you to come more closer to God. And those who are watching me for the first time, this is Evans Francis from Nagpur, India. I'm an evangelist into full-time ministry from last uh, 17 years. And I believe in this video, God is going to speak to you and he's going to empower you through his word and those who haven't subscribed to this channel do subscribe hit the bell icon so whenever i come live i share a video or a post a dream from the lord a vision from the lord you will be notified so without wasting a lot of time let us pray and dive into the word of god father god we come to thy presence in this wonderful time master lord we come to your throne of grace thank you for all the good things you have done in our life master thank you for always being with us taking care of us providing all our needs according to your riches and glory i give today's word into thy hand your children into thy hand and lord i pray master you speak to your children through your word master lord you're doing it for that i thank you i cancel all the disturbances in the name of jesus lord you're doing it for that i thank you in jesus precious name we pray amen 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 when we live a Christian life, beloved, many situations arises, you know, that it gets out of hand and we don't know what to do. We don't know how we will come out of it. But I believe today's message, God is going to speak to you in a, in a mighty way. When we read 1 Samuel chapter 11 verses 1 to 9, there we can see how Saul defeats the Ammonite. And it says from verse 1, about a month later, King Nahash of Ammon led his army against the Israelite town of Jabesh Gilead, but all the citizens of Jabesh asked for peace. Make a treaty with us and we will be your servants, they pleaded. All right, Nehash said, but only at one condition. I will gouge out the right eye of every one of you as a disgrace to all Israel. Give us seven days to send messengers throughout Israel replied the elders of Jabesh. If no one comes to save us, we will agree on your terms, agree to your terms. When the messenger came to Gibeah of Saul and told the people about their plight, everyone broke into tears. Saul had been plowing a field with his oxen and when he returned to town, he asked, what's the matter? Why is everyone crying? So they told him about the message from Jabesh. Then the Spirit of God came powerfully upon Saul and he became very angry. He took two oxen and cut them into pieces and set the messengers to carry them throughout Israel with this message. This is what will happen to the oxen of anyone who refused to follow Saul and Samuel into battle. And the Lord made the people afraid of Saul's anger and all of them, all of them came, to, came out together as one. When Saul mobilized them at Bezek. He found that there were 300,000 men from Israel and 30,000 men from Judah. So Saul sent the messengers back to Jabesh Gilead to say, We will rescue you by noontime tomorrow. There was a great joy throughout the town when that message arrived. Beloved, this is a very unusual story and uh, I doubt like have you ever heard a preacher preach from this particular text. Uh, you know this is a story about a people of God you know who are troubled uh, you know they are at the bottom they have no hope and there is no way out and they are going to the enemy Nahash uh, the Ammonite. Uh, I want to pinpoint few things and I believe that God will speak to you. When we read verse second, you know, when they said, make a treaty with us, you know, Nahash said, only on one condition, I will gouge out the right eye of every one of you as a disgrace to all Israel. Beloved, the meaning of Nahash is serpent. And uh, these Israelites were so down, so low, you know, they were ready to do a peace treaty with the devil. They are ready to do a peace treaty with the enemy. And see what the enemy does. You know, there are two things in the same scripture, you know, that is going to happen to Israel. If they accept the peace treaty, the devil is going to, the Nahash is going to remove their right eye. And secondly, it will bring disgrace to all the Israelites. Beloved, 
when we when we live in a way you know making a peace treaty with the devil you know the first thing that he does you know he will gouge out your eyes what does that mean it means sir, he will make you handicapped these people out there they were warriors and you know without one eye they cannot fight properly so nehash said i will make them handicapped and second you know they will bring disgrace these two things devil makes sir, to happen in christian's life when people play with the devil you know slowly slowly what devil will do he will cut off their wings he will cut off their talents he will cut off cut them off completely and uh, you know what happens is that they are unable to work they are unable to function properly and what happens because of that they become a disgrace to the body of christ so it is very important beloved that when you live a christian life you know i want to give you a warning that you never go go to the enemy for help remember john 10:10 10, 10 says the thief comes so the, the purpose of thief is to steal kill and destroy but jesus's purpose is to give rich and satisfying life so in other words you never strike a deal with the devil you know beloved this is the seventh day they asked for a uh, seven uh, you know say for the help photo from the israelites uh, but nobody wanted to help nobody cared for them until saul put the fear of god in them by giving them an illustrated sermon and telling them what he is going to do if they don't drop what they are doing and follow him you know that's that kind of a servant of god we want a a person who can lead from the front and one thing i want to say that he you know you know cutting those oxen into pieces was not his idea when you read the first verse above it it says the spirit of god came upon him sometimes god works in a way that we cannot understand and we will now we will think like what 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 was the reason to kill two oxen he could have done it by words also but you know god has a different way beloved i don't care that what your problem is i don't know how low you are feeling and i don't care who gave up upon you i just want to tell you that i see a real hope a victory in your life and i believe that a time of miracle for a miracle is there so don't give up hang on there hold on to jesus sir uh, because uh, beloved god is going to work for you beloved if you don't believe this you know when you get to heaven you can ask shadrak meshak and abednego you know when we read in, uh, daniel chapter 3 you know there we can see that nebuchadnezzar prepared a golden statue and it says king nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue 90 feet tall and 90 feet wide and set it up on the plain of dura in the province of babylon you know he invited all the officials and he asked them uh, you know to when when there will be the herald will shout out uh, then all the people all the nations language what they should do when they hear the sound of the horn you know, or the flute uh, and different instrument they have to bow down to the ground to worship king and uh, and anyone who refuses to obey will immediately be, be thrown into the blazing furnace uh, you know so everybody over there you know they were ready to bow down and they bowed down but remember there were some men young men who were determined that they are not going to compromise with the world they are not going to compromise with government they are not going to compromise with the devil but they are going to take a stand and says that there is only one god and only him we will serve no compromise sir. so nebuchadnezzar came to know about this and when he came to know he flew with anger and ordered that shadrak meshak and abednego be brought before him and when when they were brought before him nebuchadnezzar asked them is it true and that you refuse to serve my gods or worship the gold golden statue that i have set up and he also said i will give you another chance you know this is the right time you can bow down if you if you refuse i will throw you immediately into the blazing furnace and he said one thing beloved and then what god will be able to rescue you from my power i tell you something people speak against it's okay people speak against me it's okay but when people speak or question our god god is not going to let them go our god is a jealous god but you know what i love that shadrak meshak and abednego replied 
that we don't need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the burning furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. You know, that's what, you know, the the faith that we need to have. Look at this situation. This, look at these youngsters. They are in a very hard situation. It's already hot. The situation is hot. The fire is burning. You know, it's a hot situation and they are ready to stand up for God. But and when we read verse 19, it says Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with these three young lads that he his face became distorted with rage and he commanded the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. You know, beloved, when it was in the the, the heat was increased, the fire was increased. Uh, I want to tell you that God must have said to Jesus, this is the time that you need to go. So when we read verse 23, it says, So Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were securely tried and they were fell into the roaring flames. But suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and, and asked his advisors, Didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? And they said, Certainly did, your majesty. But Nebuchadnezzar said, Look, I see four men unbound walking around in the fire unharmed and the fourth one looks like a god you know Nebuchadnezzar must be seeing like one two three four four three two one from where the fourth one came you know he was questioning himself and remember I tell you something beloved that when it gets too hot for you to handle remember that you are not alone you got somebody by your side Allow God to work and help is on the way. Your miracle is on the way. As God worked for Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego when the situation was too high, too hot, God worked and the same God will work for you. Another example we can see is Elijah. You know, when we read the first Kings chapter 17 there, we can we see that Elijah said, As surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. So he was, uh, we can, we know the story that he was, uh, he was, he went to Kerith Brook where near the Jordan River and uh, God provided him food uh, through ravens and from the, from that river he was drinking. But soon after the while the brook dried up for there was no rain rainfall anywhere in the land but later God asked him to go to the to the widow of Seraphat and when he went there you know he saw a woman a widow gathering sticks and he asked her would you please bring me a little water in a cup and as she was going to get it he called her called to her that bring me a bite of bread too and uh, she immediately said we don't have anything I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. I only have a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. And I will get, I was gathering few sticks to cook the, this last meal. Then me and my son will die. Look at the situation over there. You know, there were so many widows in Israel, but God sent Elijah to Seraphat. You know, and, uh, but Elijah said, don't be afraid. Go ahead. Just do what I've said and make a little bread. And you know, she showed faith. And uh, when Elijah finished, uh, you know, he said, now go and make one for you and your son. And beloved, because of that faithful work in that hot situation, a situation where she was seeing that her son and, uh, and they both will die because of starvation, you know, God supernaturally worked. And not only she, but, uh, you know, her family continued to enjoy to eat for many days throughout those famine. That was a miracle that everybody around them was dying. They didn't have water to eat. They didn't have food to eat. But this family, not an Israelite, but uh, somebody from outside Israelite, Israel, a heathen, God chose her to show that he is a living God. Beloved, as... Uh, 
Saul said, Tomorrow by this time the sun be hot, you shall have help. Remember when it looks like it's a total disaster and you don't know what will happen, know that God is in control. Many of you are going through a situation where a doctor must have said that he can't do anything more. That doctor may have just given me three weeks, three months, few years. But I want to tell you, remember King Hezekiah. When we read Isaiah 38 there, we can see that the king became deadly ill. And Hezekiah is the king. And one day, here comes the prophet Isaiah. He right, marches right into the bedchamber of the king unannounced. And you can't just approach king like that. But Isaiah was fearless. He just went in. And he didn't went there with a positive message of faith. But he walks in and, and he didn't say, God save the king. God, may God's uh, kingdom be there forever. All hail King Hezekiah. No. He didn't say, good morning. How are you? He didn't say, praise the Lord. Shalom. Nothing. He just walked into his chamber. And he said, thus says the Lord, put your house in order. And because you are going to die. That's it. He turned around. He didn't say a goodbye. He just went immediately. And uh, we later see that Hezekiah repented or he asked the Lord. He started to cry and he, he started to say, Lord, hear my prayer. Remember me, O oh Lord, that I've always been faithful to you and have served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. Then he broke down and wept bitterly. But that was a lie. If he was living according to the will of God, God wouldn't have said, set your house in order or set your affairs in order. He was living opposite what God wants. But, you know, when, when Isaiah was going out, you know, God told him, go back and tell him that I have heard his prayers and uh, I saw his tears and I'm giving him 15 years of his life. Beloved, here we can see that that when he prayed, he reversed the prophecy that has been prophesied over his life. Prayers has the authority, has the power to change the prophecies. And we see that God, what happened? God gave him 15 more years. God said, you are going to die. But he cried, wept bitterly and asked the Lord. And God added 15 years. So don't be afraid when somebody prophesied bad over you. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Ask him. He can do anything for you. Another person that we can see is Peter. You know, when King Herod Agrippa began to persecute the church and he killed James, who was the brother, John's brother, he saw that uh, the Jewish people were pleased. So he arrested Peter and then he imprisoned him under the guards of squads of four soldiers each and intended to bring Peter out on public trial after the Passover. And you see, we know the story when we read Acts chapter 2. You know, the church prayed earnestly for him. You know, when he was sleeping that night, you know, an angel of the Lord appeared over there. And uh, suddenly, the angel had to struck him on the side to awaken him and asked him to quickly get up. So, and the chains fell off his wrist. And the angel said, get dressed and put on your sandals. And then he said, put, now put on your coat and follow me, the angel ordered. So the Peter left the cell and later, and he came out of the prison, you know, he must have felt the, the breeze on his face and he finally came to his senses and it, he says it's really true the lord has sent his angel and saved me from herod from what the jewish leader had planned to do to me i want to tell you that whatever the people are planned to do against you against your ministry your marriage your job your children i want to tell you that god has the power to overthrow that god has the power to protect you from that if god can protect peter he can protect you Beloved, I don't care how late the hour is. I want to tell you something that God is able to liberate you and he'll set you free. 
uh, you are going to witness a miraculous deliverance in your life remember the same night where peter might have thought okay my death is there as a guy thought i'm going to die shadrach meshach thought okay we are going to be burned that sarafat's widow thought we are going to starve to death but i want to tell you that god knows how much you can stand there these all people had confidence in god faith in god in a different manner but i want to tell you what saul said to the people of jabesh that tomorrow by the time the sun will be hot you shall have help no ifs no buts no maybes help is on the way i want to tell you beloved help is on the way for you for your family for your children for your grandchildren whatever situation you are going through when situation gets too hot know that god is with you don't give up hold on he is there with you he will never leave you or forsake you i believe this message has blessed you let us pray father god we come to thy presence in this wonderful time master lord we come to your throne of grace thank you for all the good things you have done in our life master thank you for always being with us taking care of us providing all our needs according to your riches and glory even though we are not faithful towards you many times you are always faithful towards us for that we thank you abba i give your children into thy hand their lives into thy hand every situation that looks like a tornado that they are facing lord i pray lord all the tornadoes be made calm in jesus name lord i speak complete healing deliverance and restoration upon your children right now in the name of jesus no plan of the devil no plan of the evil one prevail master let your will be established in their life master all the plans of the devil i cancel it right now in the name of jesus every situation it might be disease they are going through physically they are suffering financially they are suffering socially mentally emotionally they are suffering lord you know that master every situation be every situation be changed in the name of jesus every trials and struggles be removed in the name of jesus no plan of the devil no plan of the evil one prevail master lord you're doing it for that i thank you lord abba you're doing it for that i thank you i give your children into thy hands master give them the strength lord when situation gets too hot master lord give them the strength that you gave to shadrach meshach and abednego that they stood firm in your faith the same way everybody that is watching me lord fill them with your holy boldness master fill them fill their hearts with peace as you filled peter with peace master that even though he was he could have been killed next day master he was still fast asleep same way abba i pray for your children do a wonderful thing great thing miraculous thing in their life you are doing it for that i thank you in jesus precious name we pray amen 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 I believe this message has blessed you. If this message has blessed you, see to it that you share this message with your friends and loved ones. If you're using an Android phone or an Apple phone, you can download my app. App name is Evans Francis. And if the Lord leads you, become a pillar of fire or a pillar of cloud of our small ministry. The links are there in the description below. And if the if you want to grow more in the Lord, you can join our Telegram channel. Again, the link is in the description below. You can get my email address and my WhatsApp number. Uh, you can feel free to get in touch and uh, you can share your prayer requests. Uh, a small request, don't call immediately. Message me. And if your situation requir requires a call, surely I will call. And after this message, uh, a small message will be shared with you. If the Lord leads you, stand with us as the Holy Spirit inspires you. May God bless you. May His face shine upon you. Keep smiling. Stay blessed. Shalom. So you're ready to take the leap and get married. Congrats! Before you analyze, plan, and stress over your wedding day, don't forget about one important thing. Your marriage. Here's the great news. You can prepare for a healthy marriage with a self-guided resource right from home. One study revealed a 31% reduction in divorce in couples who completed premarital counseling or marital therapy. Courtship to Marriage is here to help. Our course and lessons confront the struggles, harsh realities, and everyday routines of married life. This program has been trusted by many couples who are looking to move to a new level of connection. But don't just take our word for it. You can try your first lesson for free. You're also protected by our 30-day money-back guarantee once you enroll with Courtship to Marriage. A long, happy marriage is right around the corner. Try your first lesson today at CourtshipToMarriage.com.
I believe today's message has immensely blessed you and I would like to share something very important message with you and I'm making this video because God asked me to. We strongly believe in the principle written in Matthew 6 3 where it says that when you give to someone in need don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Being in full-time ministry for over a decade God has enabled us to do many things for the needy body of Christ and whatever we do people who are the pillar of fire of our small ministry knows about it. Recently God enabled us to distribute food in the streets and we got something that was very painful on camera. I would like you to have a look at it. When we were giving food to those on the roadside, we met an older man who was eating newspaper. He couldn't believe it when we brought food in front of him. And even our team was totally shattered and heartbroken after seeing such a scene. What we saw is still fresh in our heart and mind and we pray to God that we would be able to do more for such people on the daily basis. When we do such activities, uh, we don't post it online, we don't post it on social media uh, because we know that our Heavenly Father sees what is being done in secret. Being sensitive to the needs of other believers is one of the biggest responsibility of the body of Christ and if the Lord leads you become a pillar of fire of our small ministry. There are other things that we also do and if you like to know more about it you can get in touch with me via email or whatsapp and uh, all the details are there in the description below. Suppose you can't uh, stand with our ministry financially, don't be disheartened. Instead, support our ministry through your valuable prayer and become a pillar of cloud of our small ministry. Always remember, even Jesus could feed the thousands when a small boy sacrificed his lunch. Will you stand with me? Alone I can't. Together we can do small things for the kingdom of God. Stay blessed. Shalom.